when you are creating color separations, there are two ways to really kind of look at them. You can preview them on your screen. So all those things that I just said that you want to try to check or to use color separations for, you don't have to physically print color separations. You can view them on your screen or you could print them and I'll show you both ways. The first thing you should do is you should be using the separations preview panel and you should test out your separations because this is the easiest way to see errors and fix them before you have paid money to do printing or the printing of the separations. You can open the separations preview panel by choosing the window menu and output and then separations preview. When you change the view mode from off to separations you will see what colors your project is made up of and because your document is set to print, um, so for our class all the products will be set to print, you do have the option to change that um, but until you do that on your own or you take eDesign Publishing which is Art2120, none of the files that you create for our class will have that setting. So by default when you change the view mode separations you should see CMYK in your project even if you for some reason you've only designed with black and yellow like in the previous example here you'll still see CMYK because they know it's a print document. If you see any colors beyond that like this pound sign E3, E2, B3, it's a hex code number that is a spot beige color that I added to your first project or your first assignment so you can kind of see what that would look like. It shows you all of the colors that you're potentially printing with. You can turn off these eyeballs to only see certain channels of color and so if you turn off all the eyeballs except for cyan you'll see a black and white image on screen representing the density or the intensity of where the cyan is in different parts of the, the image. And then you could turn it off and turn the magenta one on or you could say well what does it look like just with CMYK and without that spot color do I need to have that spot color. Uh, just make sure that when you're done previewing your separations that you change the view mode to off. Um, it can cause some problems down the line. Uh, when you choose separations as a preview it actually affects the way that the images look on screen which is a little frustrating because we're not used to looking at it that way. And so just make sure you put the view back to off when you're done. On the screen here is the front cover of the project that you do for assignment number one. It's a booklet that I just threw together that has multiple pages. Um, it has a spot color, that creamy beige color in the background is your spot beige color, but it also has images that are made up of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you look at the color separations on the right hand side of the screen, there are five representing the five colors that the project is printing with, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and the spot beige color. Now if you look at them, you can try to figure out which color is which, but you're never 100% right, especially if like a couple of them look similar. So the frog in this one and this one kind of look similar, so I wouldn't really be sure which one is blue or cyan because they both have a lot of intensity in the color in those. When you output your color separations, you should always include all printer's marks, whether I tell you to or not. Why, including all printer's marks, you include page information, which will tell you which color separation is cyan, which is magenta, which is yellow, and which is black. And so if we look at my next example here, I've turned the color separation on. I've actually set it if you want to try to recreate this. I have black plus the color turned on so that you can see the color in the image. And you can see that that first one represents where all the cyan in the image is. And so this is the darkest frog and the frog is very blue and so I would say yes that should be the cyan image and then the magenta one is over here and everywhere that there's magenta should be dark in the image and so where it's really dark in the arms of the frog that means that there's a lot of cyan, I'm sorry, a lot of magenta in that area and we can repeat that for the yellow and for the black and then see over here for the spot color, the spot color is only in the grid pattern in the background and it's solid black. That means it's printing 100% of that ink color in the background of, of the frames. When you output color separations, and I've already talked about this in a previous video, so I'll try to be pretty concise. Um, you're going to change your color mode in the print dialog box to be separations. When you do that, the bottom half of the panel will activate and you can turn the printers on and off and if the printer is turned on you will output a color separation for that color and if it's turned off it will not output. For every one page of your document you will get one sheet of paper representing each color that you're printing with and so for assignment number one if you were to print all eight pages of that booklet as a color separation you would have eight pages times five sheets per page so you would end up with 40 sheets of paper. 
So you'd have five for page one, five for page two, five for page three, because page one has a cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and a spot color. And page two has cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and a spot color. For that reason, when you are going to do your color separations, I will only tell you to output one of your pages so that you only have to output five sheets of paper. If you go to print it in our labs and it says it's going to cost several dollars to print, your settings are wrong and you're printing 40 pages, so keep that in mind. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about before we wrap up today's lecture, or this week's lecture, this module's lecture, is exporting. And so earlier in the lecture I said that you can only file save as a very few things in uh, InDesign. You can save as an InDesign INDD file, you can save as a template, and you can actually save as a .idml file, you can save as or you can export. The reason that you can only save as to those file formats is because in general you can only save as to file formats that you can open. And so you'll see that in Photoshop there are way more file formats that you can choose file save and you can save to a file format because Photoshop can open lots of different types of files. InDesign can pretty much just open InDesign files. And so if you wanted to take your InDesign project and convert it to be another file format, then you would have to choose file export. We're going to cover three, maybe four file formats, but keep in mind that there's a lot. Just check, check out the drop down when you hit file export and you'll see so many options that, that you could convert your file to be from InDesign. So first, an InDesign uh, file is an INDD file, and it's the native file format for your program, and you should always be working in .INDD files. But they are not cross-compatible between different versions of InDesign, and so if you have the newest version of InDesign, and I'm still working in CS6, I cannot open the files that you would send me. You can open my files, so if you're on InDesign CC 2017, you can open older versions. That's not a problem. It's when you send me your new version and I have an older version, I won't be able to open it. And so what we do is we save a copy of our project as a .idml, an InDesign markup language file. And you can either export to that file, you can save as to that file, or what I would recommend is when you choose file package, there's a checkbox, select it, that says include a, an InDesign markup language file. Uh, the file can be opened in any version of CS4 and newer, so CS4, 5, 5.5, 6, Creative Cloud, Creative Cloud 2016, Creative Cloud 2017, etc. Um, keep in mind that when you create a .idml file, it is a snapshot or an instance of your project. If you continue to work on your project for an hour after you create your IDML, you need to create a new IDML, so you need to delete the original and create a new one and because you can't open and edit a .idml file. When you open a .idml file, look at the top of your screen and will automatically convert it to a new .indd InDesign file and it will be titled Untitled. And so you only want to do the IDML when you're done editing for the day or right before you send it to whoever you're sending your files to. So again, to create one, there's actually three ways. You can choose File, Save, as and you can save a copy as an IDML file. You can choose file export and you can export to an IDML file or when you package you can check that box that says please include the .idml file. 